All right, and welcome. Welcome to uh, Consergo and welcome to today's workshop, Eat, Decide, and Thrive, Cultivating Wellness in 2024. We had the pleasure of uh, introducing Denise Stiegel last Wednesday for our C Talk, who came in and did a presentation on a uh, different what, a variety of nutrition and, and really how to eat, decide, and thrive in 2024. And so this is the workshop designed to go deeper. It's three sessions today for an hour, tomorrow and Thursday for an hour. So that's, um, and she'll go into three different topics. And Denise, she's a beacon of inspiration and guidance. Um, she has dedicated her career to transforming the lives of professional women aged 45 to 70. Her philosophy is simple yet profound. Um, it's eat real food, make good decisions, and be accountable. Denise believes that a healthy lifestyle shouldn't be a chore or a temporary fix, but a joyful and sustainable journey. Uh, so she has a signature offer, the Forever Wellness Lifestyle Toolbox, and Denise provides an arsenal of resources, wisdom, and coaching and coaching sessions. Um, this isn't just about diet or exercise. It's about comprehensive approach that aligns with your goals and core values. Denise's expertise isn't just theory. theory Theoretical, <laughs> theoretical. <laughs> um, it's a testament to her own vibrant, energetic life, demonstrating that she has to that be, being lean and healthy and strong is achievable at any age. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to you, Denise. Uh, awesome. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that introduction, Brooke. Hi, everyone. I'm Denise Stegall. Um, and yet I have been feeding people like since I was 11. And I realized at that time that bringing people to the table with a meal of healthy food brings them to the table in, in a pleasant way. It just it, it, it in, invites everybody to share and to enjoy. And I think part of uh, living a healthy lifestyle is, you know, that that community, you know, we all have to eat. Um, we do that to survive. But it's also something that we do to uh, to enjoy. You know, I'm a foodie. I love making new recipes, and I think so. Um, it's something that we do in a community. So today in my workshop, I really want you to get the concept that it's not about diets. It is really about changing your relationship with food, um, and really looking at the quality and the flavor and the nutritional value of food. Um, and it's about healthy choices. You know, um, my book, um, Healthy Living, Happy Life, it, it's broken down into three chapters. If you've heard this before, eat real food, make good decisions and be accountable. I'm actually going to revise that to eat real food, make better choices because we're not making bad choices. There's always just a better choice that we could make, correct? So today I'm going to talk a bit about the fundamentals of whole food, and I am going to share my screen, if I can find where that is. I'm in that stage of life where I'm constantly taking my glasses on and off. Okay, so share my screen. Let's see, find the right screen to share. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to present. Let's see. Okay, share screen. Oh, cannot share screen while other participant is sharing. That's my oh. fault. I have my music still shared. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, excuse me, one second. Yeah. I don't love the winter. Yeah. The dry air and uh, my throat's been scratchy all morning and... Cheers to with a cup of tea, everyone. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move our heads over here. So my goal today is to help you to start living a healthy life, healthy, happy life starting today. You know, and again, it's not just about food, but we are going to focus on eating real food today. And oops, we know who I am. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, best and worst this is my agenda for today. Best and worst um, recommendations people ever gave, gave us. We'll talk about eating real food. We will talk about the challenges of that. Um, I'm going to give you a simple strategy. We're going to talk about the impact of eating real food. 
And then I'm going to give you some practical tips to cooking. Uh, so many people tell me, oh, Denise, I hate to cook. It takes so much time, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make it easy for you. Okay. And I do want this to be interactive. Um, so uh, I will do my best to keep an eye on the chat. But Berg, if you can help me with that today, that'd be awesome. All right. So let's open with best and worst. What is some of the best advice you've ever gotten when it's come when it comes to you know your diet how you should eat how um you know what you should or shouldn't eat um what's the best for you based on what somebody else has said so anybody care to share let's see i went the wrong way hold on too fast anyone want to share the worst well, go ahead john i was just going to start i mean i got introduced to the idea of clean eating many many years ago and um then beyond that um grow a new body which is um very clean eating so the the general fruits vegetables multicolored vegetables um no sugar, less or no, you know, minimal carbs. Good. So, proteins. John, you can give this talk then, right? What's that? So then you can give this talk. Um, <laughs> no, but I can sit and be reinforced, which is why I'm here. So, yeah, just clean eating as a concept was really valuable for me. That's awesome. I love it, and and that's really that's really what I talk about. I call it uh, eat real food, but it's really the same thing. Okay. Um, you were going to, you were going to add something. Um, well, Br Br Brennan, um, I hope I'm saying your name long, wrong, correctly. I appreciate, um, please forgive me if I'm not, um, eat, she says, eat fresh and don't diet. Diets are temporary, make a lifestyle change. Worst advice was anything that was really restrictive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, the, the, it's interesting, you know, if diets worked, if diet pills worked, um, diet plans, programs, give it a name. If they worked, the diet industry would not be worth the billions of dollars that it is today. I mean, we're always looking for the quick fix. And, you know, diets are just this, they're quick. You know, you need to lose five pounds for a wedding. That's what you do. You go on a diet, um, but it's never sustainable. Uh, and I think we get, where do we get our advice from? More often than not, it's our friend, it's, you know, the television, it's social media. So it's always interesting to hear what, um, what type of advice people have, have gotten in the past. I remember when I was in college, um, that was the fat free craze. Mm -hmm. And my roommate and I were both athletes in college. Um, and she was always really conscious of her weight because both of us stand all of five foot tall. And so she would like fill her supermarket cart full of all of these fat free these cakes. And, he, you, and if it said fat free on it, it was in that cart. And she struggled with her weight year after year because she was eating all of this fat free food um, without really understanding that all of the fat that they had taken away, they had to replace with something. Otherwise it would taste like cardboard. And so what did they fill it with? They filled it with sugar and other additives. Um, that turned out, as we know today, fat-free is not the way to go. So that was probably the worst advice somebody uh, that I had heard that somebody had ever given to my, my old roommate. So the, as we were just saying, John just mentioned about, you know, excuse me, real uh, or whole food, like the clean eating diet. Nourishing our body is about eating real food. And it's those fruits and veggies, those whole grains, beans and legumes, seeds and nuts, lean meats, fatty fishes, you know, the things that kind of mostly grow on on the planet, um, you know, and animal protein is important, you know, and this is, this is, Animal crate protein is important if it's important to you, because there are plenty of ways to get protein from a plant-based diet. Um, and personally, I probably follow about an 80% um, plant-based diet. 
my husband's from Texas. So there's no way we're ever going to be 100% plant-based in this house. Uh, besides, I really like hamburgers. <laughs> Within, you know, and it's something that we have sparingly, but eating a healthy diet, um, if you're eating a healthy diet 80% of the time, 20% of the time is just living, right? Um, so this really is a sustainable approach to healthy diet. If it's something that if weight loss is something that you're, um, that's important to you, eating real food will help you do that because you fill your body one, you're getting the nutrition your body needs, but you're also feeling full and sustained, um, for longer periods of time. So you're not hungry. You're not getting these crazy, you know, highs and lows and crashes like people do when they're on a diet. Um, and you really find, you'll start to find that you don't have cravings. Um, that's something that I haven't had cravings for anything in particular for many, many years. Not that I don't like a piece of chocolate or a bite of ice cream um, after dinner some nights. Probably most nights I have a piece of chocolate you know, a piece of chocolate. Um, and that's enough. And that's an amazing, that was, a, that was an interesting thing for me when I started to get my husband to follow a more uh, real food uh, diet or whole foods diet. Um, because he was the guy that would sit there with a whole bar, you know, a whole candy bar, and it would be gone in five minutes. So I truly believe that this is when it comes to eating healthy, it comes to eating a diet with a small d, meaning what you eat. This is the most self-explanatory diet as possible. If it's colorful, if it's at the supermarket, yes, we talk about um, um, shopping the perimeter, because that's where they have all of the good stuff that you want. Um, yes, sometimes you have to go in and out of some of the aisles for, you know, for whole grains and rice and beans. But for the most part, the foods you want are on the outside of the um, uh, the supermarket. And with eating real food, the goal, of course, then is to reduce the amount of processed foods. If you're eating more real foods, you'll just simply eat less and less of these those other things. Um, and some of the things that most people will say, oh, but, you know, we have deli meat all the you know, we have deli meat for lunch. It's not the best for you. But it's also not the worst thing you can be eating either, especially if you're looking to increase your protein. Because I know a lot of women, we struggle with getting enough protein, especially as we get older. Hmm. So think of real food as your body's best friend. Each meal that you eat, every bite you take actually can either harm or heal your body. You know, as we get older, and let's be real, we're all getting older, we're not getting younger, our bodies are changing, and we all it's always in a state of repair. So we want to make sure that we're helping our body do that. So question for everyone, what are some of the challenges that you have found about eating real food, whether it's yourself personally, family, share, I'd love for you guys to share. So I'll just go into a really tough one for me that I'm facing currently. Okay. It's having lived a very clean health lifestyle and being very healthy for like two and a half years and then not. And now getting back into it's the hardest thing I've committed to. I don't, it's, and it's, so I have resistance. I'm a, I have awareness of resistance. So that's point blank, the hardest thing about it for me. I know I have all the knowledge. I feel like I have the knowledge I need. I just haven't recommitted. I have a suggestion, a recommendation. One meal at a time. Just focus on one meal at a time. You know, um, so often we, we, we have this idea in our head, we're going to make these changes. And we're going to make them all and we're all going to make them now. And it's January. So everyone's like, oh, New Year's resolution. We just never make a New Year's resolution. They, we, By the time February comes around, they're, they're out the window. But if we just, if you just focus on getting one meal right, and you'll go, oh, I feel good about that. I ate healthy, feel good. And then, you know, when the next meal comes, see how you feel. One at a time. It's like, you know, what, you know, babies learn how to crawl, you know, one for, you know, and then they learn how to walk one step at a time. 
it's the same thing with getting back on the horse. It's just, you know, slowly. And it is, it's, hmm, it has to be in your time. It's not on anyone else's timeline. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And do you still okay. want me to read the comments in the chat? Yes, please. Okay. Um, earlier, I, I just I, I missed Michelle's when she said um, eat a large variety of different fruits and vegetables was a was the best advice she'd had. And then now the hardest challenge for Brennan is availability. I'm not in the U.S. Everything is seasonably available, so my options are limited. That can be difficult. Yes. Um, yeah, we're kind of spoiled here um, in the U.S. You know, we have so many places that we, I mean, I live in a town of 100,000 people. We have two Walmarts. We have two Targets. Um, we, the, super, I think we probably have like 10 supermarkets. It's ridiculous. Um, but you're right. In other places, it it can be very difficult. What I would say then is what, when you can't, when you do find the healthy foods, um, I'm not, perfect at this. Um, in the, in the, at the end of the summer, I do try canning, um, freezing veggies. Um, so that might be helpful moving forward is when you have them to enjoy them in, in season. Um, and if you can freeze them, if you can can them, great. Um, if not, just do so, uh, you know, eat as much as, as clean as you can throughout the year, throughout the seasons. Um, and would certainly love to, um, to chat offline if that would be helpful. Okay. Okay. Anyone I, else I before find we move the, on? I find the challenge of um just a lot of social events where there's food, whether it's I mean, you know, ongoing holidays, parties, celebrations, and um, and while I get I don't I can choose not to eat what's there, I really like doing it. <laughs> It's hard not to when you're at a party. One, I, I, you know, I was always taught as a kid, you know, you, you, if somebody offers you something, you eat it because otherwise you're being rude. So what I would say, and and I and I was when I first started coaching, um, and people, and I would say to people, well, you know, eat before, eat something before you go to the party, and people would look at me like, well, what's the point? I'm going to a party, <laughs> and I get that, but. This way, when you go, if you've eaten something simple as an apple, you know, you're you're filling your body with with some fiber, some good fiber. So you're not going to be as hungry. And then when you go to the party, look at what's there first before you start filling your plate or still picking. And eat the things that you wouldn't have at home. So if it's a social gathering, you know, these are these are things that you wouldn't you know normally have at home on a regular basis, enjoy those. Again, remember I said before, it's 80-20. If you're eating 80% of the time, you're eating well, 20% of the time is living. Um, you know, I, I say this all the time to people and they kind of roll their eyes because as a health coach, my two favorite foods are pizza and donuts. Now I don't eat them all the time, but if we're out and about and we go buy our favorite donut shop in Minneapolis, you know I'm going to stop. And I'm not going to be guilty about it because the rest of the time I am paying attention and I'm making good choices, better choices. So have an apple before you go to those uh, parties, John. <laughs> um, excuse me. <clears throat> so simple strategy. I mentioned there's going to be a simple strategy to help you do this. And definitely eating the apple is part of this strategy. So and truly, this will help you to incorporate those natural foods and kind of get rid of the uh, the unprocessed foods as much as possible. Ready for it? It's called Traffic Light Bites. Dun, dun, dun. This is something that my coach talk, talks about. Um, uh, his name is Dr. Uh, Bill uh, William Sears. Dr. Sears is a He's a pediatrician, famous pediatrician. And this is something that he talks about. He, he, the way he talks about it is a little different than I do. But this is what the, the thing that I have found that everybody understands. We all know what a traffic light does. We all know what the colors are for. But what it does is it actually empowers you to make the best choices for you on a regular basis. So green light foods, ah, green means go. These are foods that you can eat at every single meal. These are your fruits and your veggies. Um, you can eat them raw. You can cook them. 
um, they're usually that that full of those um, those different colors, the colors of the rainbow that we talk about. Uh, and one of the handouts that I have, um, there's a link in the chat, um, is a uh, it's called Eat the Rainbow, and it actually is a little there's a little guide page where you can check off. I ate a purple food today. I ate a blue food, and it's amazing. You'll find that um, when it, when it comes to these green light foods, these fruits and veggies, you'll find that you tend to eat just a few of them. And that will encourage you to eat more of them. But again, these are things that you can eat all day. I mean, how many carrots can you eat? How many apples can you eat right before feeling full or being kind of like, okay, I've had my apple, I'm good. Um, so again, pretty simple. Then we get to those yellow light foods. And these are things that we eat pretty regularly. Um, things like um, chicken or whole grains and fish. Again, those, those items that are uh, those whole foods. But the reason we want to pay more attention to them is because they do have more calories. Um, they're going to have some more fat. So if you have um, a piece of chicken, you know, how, you know, are you weighing that piece of chicken or are you paying attention to the, the um, amount of chicken? Uh, my husband has this terrible habit of he'll come home from work and he, whether he's eaten his lunch that I send him uh, with every day or not, he'll come home and there's usually a, uh, a whole chicken that I've cut up and he'll just start picking at it. He'll eat, you know, he'll eat the leg and the thigh and then he'll start on the chicken breast. And then of course, by the time dinner's ready, he's not hungry anymore because he just ate a full meal worth of uh, calories. And again, I don't really love to talk about calories. Um, when you start eating in this way, you'll start to notice, you know, how full you get on, you know, the certain, on the, um, the uh, portions that you're eating. And I won't get too much, in, I won't really get into portion size here. Um, but if you, if you read uh, labels, we, we, you can always tell what a portion size is. And if you're curious, you know, what's a portion of chicken breast, it's usually four to six ounces, depending on, you know, how tall you are and, you know, that kind of thing, if you're a man or a woman. Uh, and that's information you can always find online. But anyway, um, to yellow light foods. So again, these are things that you're still going to eat every day. Maybe not all of them in one day or in one sitting, um, but these are foods that you can eat on a regular basis. Some of the things that I do um, caution people about, though, is things like avocados. I love avocados, but they're really high in fat and they're really high in calories. So, you know, a little bit of avocado goes a long way. Questions? And then of course, now we got the yellow, we got we got green, we got yellow, and comes next. And these are the foods that, I'm gonna say this first and foremost, these are not, you know, you know, cross off, never have again. These are foods that I want you to stop and think about first. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the store and had this anchoring for Oreo cookies, okay? Processed food high in calories, high in fat, high in a lot of crap that we don't want to put in our bodies. So I bought, the, but I bought the Oreos because I really love them. What I do though, is I portion them and make sure that when I have an Oreo, I actually have two. That's it. That's my portion of Oreos. Now, could I sit there and eat half the bag? Of course, because they taste good. And that's the challenge with these red light foods. They taste good. They're actually made, to me, it's kind of like um, like, like that, that orange stuff on Cheetos, it's like crack cocaine. These foods are actually made to want, uh, to make you want to continue to eat them. You know, these are the artificial sweeteners and um, the salt and the, and the sugar and all of these things that we love. Um, but our, we, we love to eat because they taste good, but our body doesn't necessarily love the way um, it makes us feel. Um, some of the things to, um, to notice with, with, with some of these red light foods is because they are high in artificial sweeteners, um, many of them, if you are prone to headaches, many of those artificial sweeteners will trigger headaches. I know um, erythritol and xylitol for me actually trigger migraines. 
And if I've eaten something or had a sip of something that has that, I know right away. One, I know the taste, but also it's almost instant that it, it, it gives me a headache. So when you start eating more of the green and yellow, yellow light foods, you'll start to notice when you have these red light foods that they're going to trigger you in, an, in, in a negative way. Um, questions about these. As I said before, you don't have to completely take them out of your diet. That would be that would be restrictive, right? We don't want to do restriction. But these are things that you want to maybe have, you know, once a week or, you know, once a month. Um, I did a talk a couple of years ago with a bunch of uh, eight-year-olds. And I asked the question, you know, how often does mom make you a birthday cake? And the little kid goes, well, on my birthday, duh. Well, how often is that? Well, one time a year. Exactly. Mom doesn't make a birthday cake every single day or every single week or every single month. So, you know, it's that specialty foods. It's really what, um, how I want you to look at these red light foods. You know, they're occasional foods. They are celebration foods, you know, birthday foods, uh, those kinds of things. Thoughts, questions? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Just want to make sure. Oh, the one thing that I want to say about dessert, since it is a red light food, unless it's fruit and whipped cream. <laughs> um, when it comes to dessert, and like I said before, I love donuts. Um, if you're out to dinner or if you're at an event and you know dessert is served, I abide by the three bite rule. And I think this is important because it's a little mind over matter. When you have that first bite of something, it's really good, right? Favorite chocolate cake. The restaurant here in Rochester makes an amazing German chocolate cake. And it's huge. They give us this huge piece of cake, right? So Mark and I always split it. And we always end up taking some home with us. And this is why. First bite is amazing. Put the fork down, really taste it, really savor that that chocolatey, the creaminess, just like the amazing flavor. And then have a second bite. You'll enjoy that one too. Enjoy that bite, have a conversation, have that third bite. Put the fork down, push it away, pack it to go. Why? One, because it's a lot more calories. But after that third bite, you're not actually tasting it anymore. You're just eating it because it's there. I'm like, oh, it tastes really good. And we just kind of shovel it in our mouths, right? Slow down, enjoy each bite. After the third bite, put it away. Okay. Okay, so impact of these healthy foods. A little bit about some of the negative things. I just like to focus more on the positives. So I love this picture because it's just so, It's again, it's the rainbow. It's so pretty. I uh, haven't had breakfast yet, so it's making me hungry. Um, so there are, it's amazing the impact that eating well, um, eating a healthy diet um, has on your body. I mean, you know yourselves when you've been eating well, how you feel. If you haven't been eating well for a couple of days, how you feel differently uh, then as well. It also has um, an impact, uh, additional impact on your body. So obviously the nutrients, those phytonutrients um, in plants and uh, vegetables and fruits, they actually, and I love this, like this is important, you know, especially as we get older, these are things that we're thinking about. Real food protects us against cancer. Why? One of the reasons, because they do not, um, they decrease inflammation in our body and inflammation is known to be the cause of so many of the diseases and chronic illnesses that we have today. So phytonutrients, plant power, okay? Um, the vitamins and minerals, um, increase serotonin in your body, the production of serotonin. And serotonin is that happy, that happy hormone. Um, and that will help us to, you know, push depression and anxiety um, uh, away, you know, help our mood. Now, obviously, if there's something else going on and you're struggling with depression and anxiety, Obviously, I'd love for you to make sure you connect with a professional. Um, 
Mediterranean diet, you know, how many of us have heard about the Mediterranean diet? Everybody, right? It's pretty much to me, it's a whole food diet um, with just a little bit more focus on olive oil, um, fish and less red meat. Um, oh, I mentioned, I, I kind of forget that I, I put this here. Um, so Mediterranean diet type diet, this is something that they're finding through studies that it can delay Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, um, and diabetes. And diabetes in this is in this country, in the US, diabetes and obesity is truly at a, an epidemic uh, level. They don't talk about it that way um, on the news as much as they need to, but in the health and wellness world, and actually in the health world, I, I tend to have my foot in a little bit of the health and wellness world, the wellness world, which is what I do. My husband's a kidney transplant surgeon. So my, my foot is in that world as well. So truly, if people listen to me and my, my, my way of eating, they wouldn't have to go see him ever. And that's kind of my goal is to keep people out of the doctor. Uh, I mentioned serotonin before. I probably should have moved this up a little higher. Serotonin is made in your gut or most of your serotonin is made in your gut. Your gut is so important. You know, we, we've heard now um, for years about the microbiome. Your microbiome is the, that, that good bacteria that is in your gut. And you need that, 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 the, the happy, the, the, the gut to be happy, um, to, cre you know, to create or to um, release the, the good hormones. And of course, what does the good bacteria in your microbiome eat? It eats fiber. Where does it get fiber? It gets the fiber from your uh, plants and um, fruits and veggies and your whole grains. So, and again, that will affect your mood positively. These are all very, very positive things. Simple things, just by eating, by eating real food, these unprocessed foods, you're going to protect yourself against cancer, diabetes, um, Alzheimer's disease, and potentially uh, depression and anxiety. Of course, there's always a negative. Um, and I, I mentioned this a few minutes ago, chronic inflammation is a problem with most people nowadays. And, and I say most people because no one's 100% perfect, right? We wish we were, but we're not. Um, but this is something that, you know, the sugar and the, the processed foods, the additives and uh, preservatives that they're putting in, in foods that are not whole foods. Um, our body tends to think of them as um, a foreign substance and therefore attacks it, increasing inflammation. And so usually if we, if you cut yourself, your body does the same, it, it, it sends um, some cells and cre increases inflammation to heal the wound. But then eventually the wound heals, correct? When we continue to eat processed foods and all of the sugar, it the, the wound basically never heals. The body is still constantly attacking itself. Um, and that will increase your um, chances of heart disease, diabetes, um, arthritis, um, and chronic pain. This is something that um, is is really becoming a, a challenge for many people. You know, I had my my stepdaughter a couple of years ago was struggling. Uh, she's in her early 30s now, and she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And she says, "Well, what the heck does that mean?" It basically means that this is a diagnosis that they gave her because she was, you know, she was suffering from chronic pain. They didn't have like a real diagnosis other than, yes, she's struggling with pain. My stepdaughter forever lived on deli sandwiches um, and a lot of bread, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, processed meats. Well, guess what? She got rid of all that and is starting to feel better. So um, lack of fiber. And this is something, if you've ever suffered from IBS or tummy troubles, it can be debilitating. My mother suffered from IBS for 20 something years. Um, you know how it is, you're never the expert in your family. Um, I could easily help my mother with her IBS, but she will say to me, well, you know, Denise, you can't just stop eating things you've, you've been eating for your whole life. Yes, you can, if they're affecting your, your body negatively. So if you have any type of tummy trouble, 
really pay attention to the amount of fiber that you're getting. And ladies, I don't know about you, this last one, accelerating the aging process, men too, this is important. The more crap you put in the bo your body, guess what? The more like crap you're gonna look. It increases, you know, the breakdown of collagen and, you know, elastin and, you know, a lot of wrinkles around the eyes, little saggy skin. Um, and sometimes just that, like, you can ever look at it, look at yourself and you go, oh, I, my skin just looks blah. Eat more foods, real foods, give your body the nutrition that it needs and all of those amazing vitamins and minerals. And you will see a difference in the color and the texture of your skin. Um, oh, the one thing I want to say about this, if you're, when you're eating real food, and I kind of alluded to this before, um, when you eat in this way, you will not, you'll no longer need to count calories. Counting calories, it's annoying. It's time consuming. You never really know if you're, if you have, if you're counting the right amount of calories, but this is something that is kind of old school when it comes to dieting, right? You don't count calories, you know, you have to burn more. And, and this is true. If to lose weight, you do have to burn more calories than you take in. So if we're looking to lose weight, this may be a different conversation. If you're looking to maintain a healthy weight, if you're there and you're looking to maintain your healthy weight, um, you don't need to count calories. I mean, that is something that, you know, I do personally, I count calories just because I want to know how to help my clients best. And if I'm not doing it, I can't help my clients to say, oh, you know, you know, you should be eating a four ounce chicken breast, you know, as opposed to a six ounce or an eight ounce. So it just, it helps me as a coach to help my clients, but I don't like for my clients to really pay attention and, um, I have to calorie count. Okay, so all this is great, right? So let's talk a little bit about, we know we need to eat these foods. What do we do with them when we come home with them? So a couple of questions. Did you know that in the United States, we spend more money on going out to dinner or lunch or snacks um, than we actually do uh, on our grocery bill? 43% apparently of food expenditure is on dining out. And again, that could be lunch, that could be dinner, that could be that, you know, driving through the, you know, going through the drive through at Taco Bell at two o'clock in the afternoon. The average time we spend at a restaurant is 60 to 90 minutes. Since COVID, after 90 minutes, they start kicking me out, right? <laughs> um, and that's it, 60 to 90 minutes. And you just spent a lot of money in an hour. Average, well, this has actually gone up. Um, I saw this recently. The average restaurant meal contains 11,000, uh, over 11,000 calories. Now, we have been told for years um, that we should all be eating a 2,000 calorie diet. That's not necessarily true for each person. Everyone has their own, you know, your own body. If I ate 2,000 calories, um, well, I don't know that I could eat 2,000 calories anymore. Um, by when in by eating the real foods that I do in the past, sure. But it was, you know, maybe a piece of pizza, maybe it was, you know, a donut, you know, at lunch, you know, those kinds of things. Calories add up fast when you're when you're eating processed foods. Calories don't add up that quickly or that easily when you're eating real food. But if you eat, so if you eat one meal out, that's eleven hundred calories, that's half of your calories for the entire day more than half of your calories for the entire day. And if you're eating at a restaurant, my question always is, are you eating a salad? Are you eating healthy? Or when you go out, are you enjoying uh, an indulgent meal? Which is fine once a week, but more often than not, people are, um, we're eating out more and more often. I'm cooking less and less at home. So let's change that. Okay. What well, me to you, and I'm going to ask you guys to to uh, respond to, to this. What if you had more money, you had more time, and you were able to lose or maintain a healthy weight? What would that mean to you? So I do want you to answer that. That's not rhetorical. Come on, don't be shy. I'm friendly.
Do you want anyone? Well, don't make me answer it. I don't want you to give me. I don't want you to give me my answer. That's boring. So I'm going to pick on the, you. Brennan put in the chat more more confidence. Love it. Absolutely. Eating a healthy diet, living a healthy lifestyle, gives us confidence. Makes us feel self assured. It gives us self esteem. Makes us love who we are. I love that. Thank you. I think that is important. You know, it's not about, oh, you know, eating healthy because I want to lose weight or, oh, you know, because I want to look a certain way. Sure. But it's that confidence that it gives us. You know, if we're eating healthy, you know, we're stronger, we're leaner, we're, um, you know, our skin is better. Even our hair is better. So I think that's, that's a great answer. So thank you for that. Okay. So how are you going to do that? This is how we're going to do this. We are going to start meal planning. You know, some people say to me, oh, I've tried that. I hate that. Um, but we seem to go at it in, again, kind of like uh, all or nothing. Like it has to be everything all at once. Um, and I think the important part here is to actually have a plan. We don't have to stick to it 100%. You know, I mean, that's that's, again, that would be perfection. But meal planning is actually quite simple. Let me first explain, and I have to think, of, I have to look at my notes because otherwise I'll say this wrong. Meal planning is essentially asking what's for dinner or lunch or snacks once rather than every night each week. And then shopping and prepping just once during the week before cooking. I truly believe it is the simplest way to get yourself organized and that's a big part of um, living a healthy lifestyle is organization and planning rather than doing everything kind of like by the seat of your pants so meal planning there are three steps to meal planning and these are going to be pretty obvious but bear with me number one select your dinners and their recipes how many of you have cookbooks at home i got a million of them how many of you have in, in the internet everyone there are a million, trillion, zillion, I don't even know how many aliens of recipes online. Find 10 of them that you really like. You know, you may have like um, five or six meals, you know, your kind of go-to meals. They had just a couple of others. And so then you have, you, you have those um, dinners or those recipes and then decide, are you going to, is this going to be for lunch? Is it going to be for dinner? Is it going to be for all of them? Most of the time, uh, when I, when, when we start talking about meal planning, I, I'd like to have everyone kind of plan for the whole week, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, dinner is usually where people focus, but then we kind of forget, well, what are we going to have for, you know, breakfast? What are we, what are we doing? Do we have, you know, uh, uh I, I like to have, um, cheese snacks for a, or what are they called? Um, mozzarella sticks. Um, as a as a as a snack. Well, if I haven't planned that into my shopping list, then then I get home and I'm like, oh, I don't have any of that for my snack. What do I do instead? So I want you to kind of think about this as you know, when you you're gonna do a full shop food shop, right? You don't just shop for dinner. You shop for these other things too. So just kind of um, include that into your um, your shopping list and your your meal plan. So then you go to the supermarket and you shop for ingredients or you do what I did the last two weeks because it was minus 10 here. Uh, and that was on a, on a good day. Um, I ordered my food. They delivered it. It was amazing. I went online. I actually ordered it from Walmart. Everything showed up. Very nice person decided that they would go out in the cold. So I didn't have to. I was very grateful. <laughs> Um, and then once you get that is to get the, get all the food home is to, to prepare it or put it away in, in a manner where you can see it. Like how many times have you gone shopping and you buy something and you put it in the pantry and somehow it ends up in the back and you're like a year later, oh yeah, I forgot I had that. I was going to have that with, yeah. So don't do that. Keep everything um, where you can see it. Even if it's in the pantry, keep it in the front. So things that I like to keep handy um, for snacks, you know, carrots and hummus, um, those kinds of things like healthy foods, things that go into my pantry that I keep uh, 
kind of in sight. Um, rice cakes. I love rice cakes. Uh, rice cakes with a little bit of peanut butter. Guess what? You've got a delicious snack. Um, same thing with, I like those wasa crackers. Uh, most people tell me they taste like cardboard, but apparently I like cardboard. Yeah. Okay, so. Da, 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 da. Just reading my notes, make sure. Oh, another thing about this, and, and this is something, um, I'm going to go back to this idea of, you know, your, your recipes. When you're creating recipes, especially for dinner or picking recipes, pick something that you can, so like if, like I, I made a, a, a whole chicken the other day, and this is something that I do once a week. Yes, you can go buy a rotisserie that works too, but I'm a glutton for punishment. And I decided I want to cook my own chicken. <laughs> I like to cook. So that, that chicken I had, um, we had, we had chicken, uh, chicken for dinner one night. The next night I had leftovers. I put it in my, my husband's lunch the next day. I always sent him to, to work with a salad. He's, it's really cute. He has his own little lunch pail and everything. And then what did I do with the rest of the chicken? I put it in a pot and I made chicken soup. So one chicken, three meals. So think about those kinds of things when you're uh, meal planning and truly this is something that could take a half an hour of your time on, say, I don't know, Sunday morning or Saturday, whatever day you go food shopping. Sit down for half an hour and just, you know, kind of plan the day. Um, and those meals that you can um, kind of double up on. Like, I love to uh, cook veggies. Like, I'll do a stir fry veg. Just kind of cook them up. No, without any um, seasonings other than a little bit of salt and pepper. This way, if I want to do a veggie stir fry with uh, Asian, I can do that. You can also take those um, those veggies and make them Cajun to have with um, uh, well, Mexican. I, usually, I don't know where I got Cajun from. Um, I can put them with some uh, Mexican spices that I can have as a like a chicken with my chicken tacos or even a veggie taco. So things like that are really really helpful. Um, additionally, though, and this is going back to that eighty twenty percent the eighty twenty rule. When you're doing this, don't forget those few things that you love that don't fit, that, that that may fit more into that red category. Because if you deprive yourself week after week, you're going to get to a place where you're going to like, I just can't wait to have those Oreos. And you're going to go and buy the Oreos and eat the whole. So include that in your meal planning. So the goal here, of course, is to embrace um, healthy eating. And so I hope I've given you some uh, different uh, ways to embrace that eating this lifestyle, eating as a lifestyle. And why? Because it's about living good, feeling good. It's about being happy and living a future where we are, we have vital amounts of energy. We're vibrant. We have a zest for life and we have this throughout our entire uh, life from today until the end of time. So thoughts, questions from you guys? And I love these, some of these pictures, like this, this is what I want us all to be like when, you know, as we get older, um, you know, I'm in my fifties and some days I feel like this lady, you know, I want to feel like this lady every single day of my life. Check out these two. You know, this is great. As, as a couple, they're eating well. And this is another thing when it comes to meal planning and cooking, enjoy it with someone else. We always want to be doing some kind of exercise. And of course, no matter what we're, we're doing, our children, whether they're little or in their 30s, they see what we're doing and how we're eating and they will follow. So I'm open to questions, comments. One thing I'll, this is just to add in that in Consergo, a lot of times we have people who work with the energies of life and just adding in um, when foods are prepared with love and with, you know, really, really care, um, that makes a difference. And I think that, you know, home cooked meals versus eating out, especially fast food that doesn't necessarily have any of that. Some restaurants do, you can almost tell when you walk in, but so I just wanted to add that. I think that's another aspect of 
you know, clean energetically, if you will. I love it. Absolutely. You know, earlier I talked about it. I said that, you know, I started feeding people when I was 11. What had happened, and I remember this day, and my mother loves to tell this story. My mother's 82 now. When I was 11, my mom had taken my sister to the, the dentist, who, which who lived like 45 minutes away. And they got stuck in traffic on the Long Island Expressway, which is pretty common. So she called, I love it. She called from a payphone. Okay, I aged myself all again. And said and called and said, Hey, Denise, tell daddy that dinner's gonna be late. You know, I'm stuck in traffic. You know, I'm at exit whatever on the part on the expressway, which back in the day I actually knew what that meant. Um, and I said, Oh, okay. And then I looked in the refrigerator and realized she had taken stew meat out for dinner. And I thought, well, I've had stew before. How hard could it be? So I took the meat out of the refrigerator and my mom had a Fanny Farmer cookbook, the bottom of the bread drawer. And so what did I do? I flipped it and, and recipe for beef stew. My mom came home and she went, oh, what's that smell? And my dad and I, I, my, I just set the table and my dad and I were getting ready to, to, to have dinner because we didn't know when they were coming. And the look on my mother's face, like this was the most amazing thing that anyone had ever done for her. I just made dinner. And sitting at that table with my mom and my dad and my sister that night, that's when I realized that yes, food can change your life. And you're right, I made it with love and you know, making something for someone else, you're showing them love. When you make something for yourself, you're showing yourself love. I love that. And also you mentioned beef stew, you know, there's a lot of, studies if you will that you know free range versus the mass um, slaughterhouses that there's a real difference and that's real interesting stuff so energetically there's a whole whole lot here absolutely i mean that's something that we could talk about another time um you yeah. know is you know you know do you do organic do you do you know and why um, and, and that's part of it is, you know, the energy and the, you know, the, the, the treatment of the animals and, you know, organic is, you know, is better for us. And there yeah. are definitely some things that we, if we're going, if we're going to eat them, we should eat organic, um, free range. Um, and with, with red meat, red meat is one of those things you do want to do, uh, less, uh, in this respect, yeah. you know, you're going to eat healthy. You can have red meat, but um, limit that. That is a good, now that would be a great class too, is to talk about that as well. It is, um, especially like, <clears throat> so during the two years where I started gaining my weight, I was living in a, a home that we didn't specialize, we didn't focus on the kind of food. Um, we just got the bottom line is I wasn't in the grocery shopping, but that, and I didn't complain because I wasn't in the grocery shopping, <laughs> you know, and I didn't complain because like, you go ahead. And, um, and, and, and I've noticed that I got into the habit of just getting that. And, and I hadn't been there for like 10 years before I would not eat those kind of food, like not even kind of foods, but we're talking this pork chop versus this pork chop. Right. And I can definitely tell the difference. Um, my, my mom would brought me some stuff recently and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is the reminder of why I have to go back to eating with the, um, certain kind of quality of, of meats, even it was a big deal. Yeah. Quality awesome. over quantity always. Um, you can taste the difference. Your body knows the difference. Um, and you just feel good about yourself. Yes. Denise, yes. I'm always amazed when I'm in a hospital, whether it's me, which is not very often, or visiting someone and seeing the food that is being served there. I'm <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what's wrong with this picture? Anyhow, yeah. that's um, a whole rabbit hole there. That, no, I, and it's so true. It's so true. You know, um, you know, we, you know, so I live in Rochester, Minnesota, home of the Mayo Clinic. Yeah. And what I do is wellness, you know, wellness care. What they do there at the clinic is sick care. It right. really is. So when you follow wellness care, you can avoid sick care, you know, as much as possible. I mean, you know, every now and then we get dealt a bad card, right? Um, but we want to try to, if our bodies are, 
we're eating the right food. Even when we get that, 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 that bad card, that bad health card, you know, our bodies are more um, prepared uh, to fight. Denise, can you tell us um, in just a couple sentences what tomorrow, what we can expect for tomorrow? Because we will be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Same Zoom yes. link. Yep. Tomorrow I am. So, oops, let me go. Tomorrow we are going to be talking about um, making better decisions. And, you know, I, I said earlier, making good decisions, but making better decisions. Actually, today we talked about making better decisions when it comes to the foods we eat. But tomorrow we're going to include, you know, how we're moving, you know, how we're sleeping, you know, are we organizing ourselves um, in a certain way? Like we'll talk a little bit about, you know, our planning, more about planning. And this was specifically about calendar management. And so if we are scheduling ourselves well, we're scheduling in time to do the movement that we enjoy, um, we can take those next steps to living a healthy lifestyle. Because it's not just about food. It's a big part of it. But there are all these other pieces to lifestyle. And so tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, making better decisions in other areas of health. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. We will be, um, we do have a book club tonight at the second session. If you've uh, already been attending uh, the Dow of Network Marketing by the author himself, John Drain. <laughs> and um, and we will be back here tomorrow for session two at 11 o'clock with the same link. Sounds great. Thanks, everyone. If you have thank, any thank questions, you. please don't hesitate to connect with me. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Denise. Bye. Thank you.